Good afternoon, welcome and thank you for being here. I would like to dedicate this paper to my wife and daughters, to Mr. Charlie Golden and to all the explorers and scientists of the world. In the past, in our time and in the future, and of course to God who gives us strength, knowledge and the will to explore. May the spirit of exploration continue forever. The objective of this, of this paper is to compare the environment in which the 1492 journey took place to be able to do it with available technological means and knowledge. And on the other hand, the planning of a possible man-marred mission within the next 10 years or so. These topics are addressed here for both, for both the endeavors. The objective of each expedition. What is known at that point in time to complete the, each objective? What experiences can be held to learn and continue? The factors that may cause a problem to succeed. Knowing this, what is necessary to plan and execute exploration? What are the steps needed to do it and approach? The goals that will be achieved when each, uh, when each one is completed. Although this is not intended to be a time travel situation or to judge if an exploration is good or not, the idea is to try to imagine being in each point in time knowing only what was known at each time. By doing this, perhaps it would make sense to compare these explorations. These endeavors express the human spirit of, for exploration, each one in its own dimension and possibilities. Each one is a step forward for what may come in the future. With that in mind, from the last decade of the 15th century to today, mankind has been able to discover new lands, to explore the poles, the mountains and the sea, learn to fly, create rockets and send humans to space, land on the moon, create amazing vehicles as the space shuttle, and build huge structures as the ISS, send robots to explore the planets from, from orbit and land on this world. Proofs like Pioneer, Viking, Voyager, Pathfinder, Opportunity and Spirit, Mars Express, Curiosity, Maven, and maybe 10 years from now, Humans will visit Mars for the first time, opening the way to explore, opening new ways, uh, opening the way to new explorers that was done in 1492, and has been done throughout the history with each new achievement, exploration, and discovery. Before we begin to compare these two and the rules, I would like you to consider this fact. It took less than seven years to achieve something that seemed to be impossible in the early 1960s landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth. Traveled at least 360,000 kilometers in space. At that time, the only experience in manned space flights were 108 minutes orbiting the Earth and 15 minutes suborbital flight. Landing on the moon before the end of the 1960s sounds like a dream, but it was successfully and amazingly achieved. With all the collateral benefits and technology and bringing the attention of and admiration of all inhabitants of Earth. Now, let's begin to see what was needed in 1492, a few years before that date, and what is needed now. In 1492, the objective was to find a shorter route to the Indies, not by land, but by sea, going west. Today, the objective is to land the first humans of Mars and bring them back. When? Perhaps in the next 10 years. Both expedition open new frontiers. Having the objective, now we are going to see what is known. In 1492, it was believed that the circumference of Earth was 30,200 kilometers, and the distance between Spain and Sipango, Japan, according to the calculations based on meridians, was 2,300 miles. Looking at it in our time, both measure measurements were incorrect. What do we know about Mars? The, dis the distance to it, the atmospheric compositions, temperature and weather patterns. We know there are seasons, sun, storms, and winds. A good knowledge based on the information set, sent by unmanned probes and analyzed on Earth. This is an advantage over the 1492 expedition. Living in 1492, Christopher Columbus understood the direction of the winds. He knew that there were winds coming from the east that put him take him to the west and west winds further north that couldn't bring him back home. At least, this is what we have been studying for some years. 
Well, it's not clear if he was aware of the European season, and the answer is probably not. Today, Mars has been explored by unmanned crews for many years and by many nations, such as the Vikings, Mars, Mars Pathfinder, the Mars Rover, Curiosity, Mars Express, and among, among others. Thanks to them, we have lots of information and photographs. In regards to the manned space experience, ISS crews are rotated approximately every six months. Although, in 1995, one cosmonaut, Valery Polyakov, stayed aboard the Mir for 437 days. This means that astronauts can live in microgravity for longer periods. In our lifetime, astronauts landed on the moon and returned safely to Earth. The space program has focused on assembly structures in space to allow astronauts to live in microgravity for longer periods of time and perform research about the adaptability to that environment, recycling of water and oxygen, administering energy, testing docking and undocking techniques, and sending unmanned vehicles to take supplies to the space station. Challenges, Skylab, Mira, and ISS have allowed humans to be in space continuously for decades. Today, many international space agencies are participating in one way or another in a space program with common objectives, perhaps building a model of the ISS, training astronauts, performing research in different fields. Some agencies may have no direct participation, but eventually, and hopefully, they will. As you may know, today there is a global exploration roadmap created by the International Space Exploration Coordination Group that is working towards the specific goals and health benefits, and this is a fact now. Now, let's evaluate what is known from previous experiences to achieve each of the objectives. In 1492, it was known that the Vikings had explored lands such as Iceland, Greenland, and perhaps reached the northern tip of American continent. It was also known that Marco Polo reached the east coast of the known land. He described his journey and his contact with Qatar, China, and Sifango, Japan. It took place from 1271 to 1295. So this meant that somehow these lands could be reached by sea. For a manned journey to Mars, all the unmanned vehicles have sent amazing information about the soil, the weather, the atmosphere, the search for life, and have tested different landing techniques, firing rockets in the final approach like the Vikings, bouncing like the Pathfinder, using a sky crane like the Curiosity. For Norway, there are incredible image, images of the sort of state by the Viking, and more recently by the Mars Express and Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. This, uh, this means that humans know how to get to Mars successfully, although there is always a risk and some unmanned missions have failed. Previous experience to the 1492 journey was the sea travel all along the African coast by Bartolomeo Diaz and the experience of Christopher Columbus in his journey to Canary Island, the Azores Island, and also is believed that he explored Iceland at some point. For the Mars expeditions, the lunar landings are an excellent source of knowledge and great example of how it can be achieved, of course, keeping in mind the difference of distance and planetary environment. The planning, construction of elements, and assembly of in orbit of the ISS is a demonstration of what can be done, perhaps, the vehicle that will take humans to Mars will be assembled and tested in Earth orbit, and this will be the departure point, just a ship safe from the harbor or a port. With the ISS, astronauts and ground personnel have, have learned to work outside and replace for other equipment, and have kept human presence for more than a decade, different crews but permanently inhabited. The experiences previous to the journeys have led explorers to create each time better and more accurate instruments to help them in their endeavors. In 1492, the available instruments for navigation were an hourglass, a compass, a rope, a log, and a cross staff. Map, maps like this, maps like these ones done by Fran Mauro, Toscanelli, and Ptolemy inspired Columbus the plans for this expedition. Today, Astronauts are living in a microgravity environment, studying their adaptation to it, understanding how the human body works in that environment and the risk involved. This will be a critical factor for a Mars manned mission. In addition, being able to solve certain physical problems with the remote assistance of medical doctors. For navigation, there are computers and sophisticated instruments that help the crew to take the correct decisions. 
the only way available in the 15th century was the use the, uh, was the use of the wind as propeller. It was a story, and the signs of different types of sails were used to provide the needed speed and stability to navigate and reach the objective. In our time, the space program have used different types of propulsion systems to get the acceleration needed to arrive to orbit or to abandon Earth's orbit. One technique have been used, other techniques have been used to gain speed and change orbit by using the gravitational pull, the gravitational assist of planets. For example, it was used by the Galileo Space Probe. Energy can be generated and administrated using solar cells in space. Use of nuclear power reactors for deep space exploration. On Earth, the use of windmills give another alternative to produce energy and may be used on Mars. About the vehicles, the most advanced vehicles that Christopher Columbus could use were the carapels. In the space program, a variety of space vehicles have been in operation. The most sophisticated has been the space shuttle. On this day, the only manned space vehicles active are the Soyuz and the Shenzhou and the ISS as a space station. The 15th century was characterized by the rivality of nations and their willing to build great empires. So no one was interested in John Ventures, although Columbus was in, from the Republic of Quinoa, not from Spain. The history of the space program has shown the involvement of different nations in one way or another to achieve one common goal. From Mercury to Apollo, Australia contributed contributed with its dish antenna to relay the signals from the, from space to Walsall. The ISS, as it is known, has the participation of many, many space agencies, countries, private companies, and universities. At this point, we know the past experience to learn from and what we can count on for each exploration. But there are some factors that are unknown and may be against the possibility of success. To mention a few of them, in 1492, there, were, there was uncertainty about the journey. All the values were calculated on what was available. There was no possibility to know what was beyond the horizon. The idea was rejected by experts recommending the monarchs of, the, the monarchs of the Spain and also the King of Portugal not to proceed because calculations were wrong. Also, the lack of knowledge of the European season was a great threat to the expedition, especially between June and November. In the space program, one potential problem to be considered is the physical and psychological health of the astronauts for long periods of time in microgravity, away from Earth, and confined to a limited area for near three years. Another factor is the amount of supplies needed for that period, including food, water, oxygen, spare parts, tools, medicines, entertainment, among others. Other known factors that could affect the success of the journey are the magnetic variations of the compass when traveling west. This is, the north star and the compass needle are not aligned. How long the journey will last? The crew may become anxious because of seeing nothing but water, superstitions and beliefs. What will be found west of the Azores and often never explored before? Another question, are the supplies going to be enough for the journey? For the Mars man mission at this time, there are efforts aimed to reach this goal. Programs, technology, economic funds are needed to design and build new launchers, new space vehicles that can be used beyond their orbit exploration, and the structure necessary to support human life throughout this journey. Further investigation is still required. The experience of a Mars sample return mission would be of great value, not only to study the composition of the Martian soil and the possibilities to support growth of plants, but to learn about the whole journey landing and lifting and lifting off from Mars, leaving the Mars gravitational pull and returning to Earth orbit. At this point we have reviewed the available resources at both the, as, as both areas and some of the factors that are key elements to be able to begin this great journey. What is needed? What are the specific issues to be solved in order to begin and reach the goal? For the expedition to the Indies, Everything seemed to be ready, but there was no support from any nation. And for, he and for hence, no crews, no ships, no funds. No funds to do it. It is just like, it is just like a dream. For the mass man mission, uh, there are some plans and ideas. In a perfect scheme, if many of these space agencies contain countries, universities, and private industries, unite effort, 
The goal could be reached in a relatively shorter time. Perhaps the International Space Exploration Coordination Group is the way to go, focusing, focusing efforts towards the objective with synergy and taking advantage of the knowledge of each one of the members. In order to fulfill all the needs to be able to carry the exploration, besides the government support, funding was needed. Before 1492, Columbus presented his ideas to the kings of England, to the kings of England, France, Portugal, and the king and queen of Spain. As you may know, initially the king and queen of Spain were not interested, but they were later persuaded to prevent another nation from getting wealth and power. If such, an endeavor was successfully completed, like expanding the territory and right to explore the ocean sea beyond the west of the Azores, and perhaps treasures could be brought back. This was a risk and a change of the way they thought how the Earth and the universe were, a paradigm change, not easy. Today, the situation is quite the same. Who should invest and why? A journey of the magnitude of a Mars manned mission, besides the main objective that is to explore Mars and perhaps begin to form a colony on the planet, or, yours, or just establish a Mars orbital space station, or be a new step towards a major objective, the direct benefits of Earth are enormous. The technological, scientific, medical research will be used on Earth, making life better and working together for a common objective. Again, a paradigm change. This is a summary of what we have at this point in time for each and end. What we have, what is needed, difficult but possible. Without doing probability calculation, just looking at this point in time, combining known facts and experience, the unknown facts, available resources, and financial funds just before 1492, and, and as it is today, the probability of success, or even to be able to execute the expedition, was near 10% in the 15th century, and today it does not go higher than 30%. This is for the, for the 1492 and the 2024, 2027, time frames. If nothing changes, neither of the, the expeditions will take place. Fortunately, things change over time. For one thing or another, vision changes. Paradigms are broken, and the new things take place. The monarchs of Spain, after winning the war with the Moors, provided the ships, uh, crews, and funds for the journey. Of course, after signing the agreement with Christopher Columbus about the shares, new discoveries took place and treasures were brought. Today, in 2014, perhaps a good way, with many advantages, if with many advantages could be, if many space agencies join effort towards one objective. This will distribute the cost, work, and benefits among many organizations and countries. This is more a political issue, and agreements have to be done, just as in 1492. Also knowing what is needed, a plan has to be prepared. A modular space vehicle would be needed in order to guarantee the human health of our lead and the success, the success of the mission. As you recall, Columbus used three ships for a safer exploration. The maps have been done, so the route to the Indies can begin. Of course, with what was known at that time. For our time, the route to Mars, distance, and atmospheric conditions, radiation, Micrometeors and other key issues are known. The effort has to be focused on new <coughs> heavy lift launch vehicles, manned space vehicles, resource recycling, and almost an independent space vehicle that could support life for nearly three years without air intervention. There are many superstitions in, there were many superstitions in the 15th century, for instance, sea monsters. How to deal with this? What situation may this crew may this crew will find during this journey? Some of them could jeopardize the exploration. And this almost happened when the compass was no longer pointing to the North Star. When there was no wind to move ahead the ship. The crew anxiety after, after some time and seeing nothing of water and thinking how they that how could they return safely if needed. For a journey to Mars, which of them would be safer? Assembling a modular vehicle docked to the ISS, or perhaps in a different point in Earth's orbit, and then docked it to a Mars lander, 
and when all has been tested here into the park to Mars, perhaps taken with a crew all the supplies needed for the exploration, or consider sending supplies models to certain trajectory positions where the crew could run the boom and dock with it and move supplies from there to their exploration vehicle, what technique guarantee a better result? For both, en for both en en endeavors, return and abort plans are needed. For 1492, as Christopher Columbus knew the direction of the wind, it was, it was quite possible that, if needed, he could be able to return traveling north to catch the western winds. Considering a manned mission to Mars, different scenarios must be analyzed. In case of an emergency return with all the structure, or if needed, abandon the structure and return in the manned space vehicle designed for deep space exploration, this could be the right. If the manned space structure arrives safely to Mars, a small vehicle is needed for a safe landing on Mars surface, taking some of members of the crew, carrying equipment, explore and return safely to Mars orbit, a Mars lander is needed. Just as Columbus arrived to the new land in a boat, leaving the ships on, a, on deeper waters, away from the beaches. This Mars lander has the same functionality, a bridge between the big ship and the target. Besides the natural risks that uh, an expedition could find beyond now, the known ocean, there were other threats. Ships of other nations that could block the expedition. As it happened when they spoke Portuguese ships in the horizon, and sail away to avoid any problems. In order to send a crew to Mars and continue with the idea of a model of space vehicle, all systems and all the structure should be verified in Earth orbit before the journey begins. Even some repairs that could take place on board. Ground scientists will have to recommend the best dates for departure, considering shorter periods of travel and also the, uh, the exploration time and departure from Mars. Having considered all the previous factors and having the results available, the exploration can go ahead. The condition is reach the objective and return home safely. At this time, we know that Columbus did not arrive to the Indies, but to new lands, the new world. And his tenacity opened the way to others expanding the European culture to these new lands. As for us, in this year, it is a good time for the space agencies to make a commitment, plan, design, build and execute the first human exploration of Mars. Define possible options by having one space model in orbit, beginning the assembly of a Mars space base. Perform a bus, apply by, apply by of Phobos and Deimos, and all the scientific studies, the studies that will be performed on the surface of Mars. The total travel time for Columbus and his crew was seven months and 12 days, including the exploration of the new lands. He was able to load his ships with water and food and return uh, for the return trip. One ship was lost. The other two encountered a big storm on the way back and took different routes, but finally both arrived in Spain. The Marsman mission would perhaps last around 31 months to complete the journey. I have included here some dates considering periods where Earth and Mars will be closed. Having the resources and all what was identified previously needed to go ahead with the explorations, the representation we saw some slides back could change to something like this, where the probability of success of Christopher, of Christopher Columbus exploration increases to a 60% or perhaps higher. The critical factor is the uncertainty and unknown situations, factors that at that time were unthinkable. For a Mars manned mission, in beginning a real effort, the probability of success increases nearly 85 to 90 percent. There is always the uncertainty factor, the missing elements and the technology. It is clear, it is clear that if no investment is made in technology to support life on such a journey, it will not take, not take place. These are the results of the 1492 endeavor and some conditions that could have changed the result of the mission. The objective was to arrive to Zipango. It was not achieved. It was not achieved. But to the Spanish crown, the objective were achieved. He found new lands and took to Spain treasures. Our objective will be to land on Mars and return safely to Earth, to begin the exploration of the planet and perhaps establish a Mars orbital space station or a Mars colony, uh, or a Mars colony, and be the next step towards new goals. One final point. I 
would like to finish with this paragraph. When President Kennedy asked Dr. Bernard von Braun what it would take to build a rocket that could carry a man to the moon and bring him back safely to Earth, von Braun answered with him with high words, the will to do it. Perhaps this is what is missing now.